don't know what is going on inside the body of today. We may suggest, but in fact, to be honest, we don't know exactly what is going on when our best divers stay at the depth of 120 meters. We try to build the bridge, as I said in the very beginning, bridge from the science to safety. And one part of this bridge, this is physiology. This is understanding what is going on inside the diver body. And I am happy to introduce Associate Professor Friedrich Klimeter. So, one of the well known and most deserved physiologists in Friday area. And I ask Fred to explain us a little bit what is going on inside our body. Thank you, Oleg. Thank you all to be here. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Thank you for this invitation. And thank you also, Kat, and all the staff members for organization. So the idea here is to talk about, of, of course, free diving and to make the relationships, the different relationship you can have between your heart and your brain. We test all the, all the free divers. So what I can say is that there's no or few arrhythmia, most of the time it's after, and the arrhythmia are very classical, extrasystolal, like you can see in uh, sportsmen. There's no change of your cardiac axis, so the effect of blood shift is maybe not so important on your heart. And it works, so the main problem for your heart will be thermocline, so-called equalization at the same moment, probably. And of course, hypoxic situation, because hypoxia increase also arrhythmia, it's well known. So we just published with Oleg a paper trying to analyze, to have a new uh, statement for accident. We analyze the five last year of IDA competition. So it represents almost 1,000 competition, almost 40,000 dives in swimming pool and, of course, in the sea. And we observe that the average incidence is about 3.43% for all accidents on average for five years. The average blackout incidence is almost the same, 3.31. And pulmonary incidence is lower, 0.38. Known pulmonary problem, okay? Because you know all that most of the time free diver didn't say nothing about the pulmonary problem. Or sometimes they don't feel it. Sometimes they don't feel it also, it's true. It is, uh, this is just what is report and known, okay? But it's good to understand. We found higher risk for nothing discipline, okay? This is interesting. So the risk is higher for nothing dynamic nothing in swimming pool and constant weight nothing. So you have a higher risk of blackout for nothing discipline. Maybe uh, we will have a discussion about that to change the rule or to have a practical change, I don't know, for freediver. So take care about your, this discipline. You probably observe that you have maybe a little bit more blackout with such discipline. So you understand that you have, for your diving response, a lot of parameters, a lot of modula modulatory influence from peripheral, baroreceptor, trigeminal, and a lot of modifying factors with some metabolic adaptation, less lactate concentration, reactive oxygen spaces, and decreasing of your oxygen consumption at mitochondrial level for elite freediver. So it's complicated, and it can, can be more and more complicated. We have a lot of questions unknown in freediving, and especially during real freediving in the sea, underwater, because we don't have a lot of device to record your physiology. So it's finished, you can breast normally. Okay. Thank you. Can I, can I have this
Uh, it's not mine. <laughs> Questions to Friedrich? Do you see any difference between static front hold and that front hold for brain and memory and uh, visual image? Because maybe the diver's point is less strong than the static. We found, as I say, in static apnea, that only elite breastfold divers have memory trouble. Now I test recently and I published in, uh, in France a study on normal, I, I don't know what is normal, but I can say less trained free divers, and I found that there's no memory trouble. Okay, it's just maybe a question of epoxic doses you have during training that at a certain threshold you, you have a, like a trigger point and you, you go in another way, in a patholo pathological way, not a physiological way. So your body can adapt most of the time, but if you are at high level, you have high level training, so no recovery enough and then you will have some trouble everywhere, in fact. So it doesn't matter what you do? It doesn't matter the discipline? It doesn't matter? The what discipline. you do? With static apnea or whatever other apnea? Yes. Static apnea, deep dive, all the problem. Deep dive is different also. Question from Kwon. Where was the number of subjects that you tested the short-term memory issue? Oh, in this study? This one, it was uh, 30, 30 uh, elite free divers, 30 uh, less train, and 30 control. And you found the statistical significance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short-term memory? Yeah, short-term memory. And now we have a study we test with MRIs, the structure in your brain responsible for short-term memory. It's the hippocampus. You know, hippocampus is uh, a structure, it's not the animal, it's uh, it's a structure in your brain responsible for uh, episodic memory and also neuroneurogenesis. It means that you can create new neurons. But this structure is highly sensitive to hypoxia, more than the other structure. Your brain is very sensitive to hypoxia, but this structure is highly sensitive. And for the moment, I can say that in Less trained free divers, not elite free divers, there's no memory trouble. So, no problem. So, free diving is safe if you not practice at high level and if you have enough recovery during your training. I think you said earlier that with the elite divers, they just have more training. So, does it come from more adaptation or is it more genetics? That's why they ended up being elite. Or is it the slow progression and the adaptation and then you will eventually not be affected by the depth or the speed and so on? So this is a training effect. Adaptation from a physiological point of view is very long term, 1,000 years, okay, with genetic transmission. Uh, so this is mainly training effect. Maybe you have epigenetic effect. You know, epigenetic effect is modulation of your gene depending of environment. So depending of your training and depending of hypoxic doses. So all the all what we see now is only good acclimatization when you train, and on a moment, the acclimatization is not possible because you have not enough recovery. I say that several times, huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's good, Tino. <laughs> I bring the last one, two more questions, because we can Yeah, yeah, so yes. we, we can have a lunch. Five yeah. seconds, just to let you know that Five oxygen minutes. levels, and probably deltas of Six. oxygen, yeah. whenever it can be hypoxic or hyperoxic or something, it's probably the most powerful epigenic trigger. So that's why it's very interesting for us to study what you are doing, guys, and what we are doing with hyperoxia also. Both are the same coin, but we have to learn a lot. But this can be very interesting for epigenetics. Epigenetics, it's changing your DNA during your lifetime. You see, it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's deeper. It's deep, yeah. Thank you so, so much, right?